Thank you, Adam. Thank you, Delano. Just uh, a note, you uh, write this down. Next Sunday night, Adam's going to be sharing next Sunday night. Uh, Lucas is going to be, Lucas Morris is going to be leading uh, worship time along with a few other youth. So uh, make plans to be here next Sunday evening and, and uh, encourage them as they uh, pursue uh, the gifts that God has, has given them as they, as they use them to glorify Him. Psalm 90 is where we're going to be at today. Psalm 90. This coming Tuesday marks the beginning of a new year. Some of you are probably pretty excited about that. Others of you might be a little hesitant, but it's coming. And I don't know about you, but I want to make the most of every day in 2019. I want to make the most of every day as a husband, as a father, as a friend, a believer, a pastor. And I wonder today if anybody else has a desire to make the most of every other day in 2019. Anybody else? Back in 2013, I read a book called 20,000 Days and Counting. The book is actually written by a man named Robert Smith. And Robert Smith is the business manager for Andy Andrews, who's a very popular author, someone that I have enjoyed reading and so when Robert Smith came out with his book the, the title alone was really fascinating to me and so I decided that I would uh, purchase a copy and, and read it and I have to say that it was a book that it captivated me and it really began the process of helping me begin to value each day I want to share with you just uh, an excerpt from the inside cover flap of the book and I quote, most people sleepwalk through day-to-day -day existence, passively letting time slip away. Unfortunately, impending death is usually the only thing that can wake people up to the intensity of life. But what if it didn't have to be that way? What if you were able to truly discover the driving purpose for your life, live each day with maximum intensity, conquer all your limiting fears, learn how to accomplish more in one day than most people do in one year? 20,000 Days and Counting pre presents breathtaking simple strategies and concepts that enable readers to be 100% present and intentional with every passing minute of, of every day for the rest of their lives. 100 years from now, what will you have left behind? What will your legacy be? Are you ready to find out? My answer to that question was yes. I was ready to find out what kind of legacy I was going to be leaving behind if my time on earth were to come to an end in 2014. And I must admit, as I began to evaluate my life, as I began to look at my life, I wasn't very excited about my legacy. I mean, sure, there were some things I was pleased with, but overall, I knew that God had a greater legacy for me to leave behind than the one that I was currently building. And so as a result, since that day, I have been trying to live with an awareness of the value of one day. You see, here's the reality about legacies. Legacies are not built at a single moment. Legacies are built one day at a time. The legacy of my life, the legacy of your life, is being determined by what we are doing with each day that God has given us. And so the series we begin today was born out of my own personal experience to gain a heart of wisdom as it relates to the value of one day. I heard someone once say that we tend to overestimate what we can do in five years, and we tend to underestimate what we can do in one day. And just think about that for a moment. There's some truth to that. We tend to overestimate what we can do in five years, and we tend to underestimate what we can do just in one day. 
See, God doesn't want us to underestimate the value of one day. And so I believe that he wants us to go into this new year with this series so that moving forward, the days of our lives will be lived out in wisdom. Have you found Psalm 90, verse 12? This is going to be the kind of the, the verse that we're going to look at every week in the series. Now, we're going to have other verses as well. But this is kind of the theme verse of this entire series. And I want you to look at what it says, beginning in verse 12. So teach us to number our days that we may present to you a heart of wisdom. Father, speak to our hearts. May our eyes be open to see the value of one day. I pray that you would teach us to number our days so that we may present to you a heart of wisdom. In Jesus' name, amen. Teach us the number of our days so that we may present to you a heart of wisdom. The first thing I want us to notice from this verse is the request. Moses says to God, teach us the number of our days. That was Moses' prayer request. Now, I have to be honest with you. I have made a lot of prayer requests in my life. But it wasn't until 2013 that I had ever requested God that he would teach me to number my days. I had never done that before. I had never got up and said to God, would you teach me to number my days? And yet I find here in the word of God, I find Moses saying to God, requesting of God, God, would you teach me, would you teach us to number our days? It's such an important request for us to make to God. You see, the only way that we're ever going to have a correct estimation of time and the value of a day is when, is when we receive wisdom from the one who created time and gain his perspective. Dr. Charles Stanley defines wisdom this way. Wisdom is seeing things from God's perspective. How does God see this? And then responding to that according to biblical principles. The Bible teaches us in Jeremiah 17, 9, that the heart of man is deceptive. It says, the heart is more deceitful than all else and desperately sick. Who can understand it? That's a good question. Another word that we could substitute for deceitful is the word sly. In other words, the heart of man is devious. It's underhanded. It's sneaky. The heart of a man can't be trusted. If we listen to our heart when it comes to the matter of time, we are going to be led astray. We are going to deceive ourselves into believing that we are making the most of a day when in reality, from God's perspective, we're not. And so we need God's wisdom because as Jeremiah goes on to say in verse 10, only God understands the heart of a man. If we truly want to know our heart, if we truly want to know if we are Looking at the value of the day from God's perspective. We need the wisdom of God. We need our hearts to be illuminated by the wisdom of God so that we will have God's perspective on time and we will live our days accordingly. Now, the bad news is that our hearts are deceitful. That's bad news, right? But aren't you thankful that where there's bad news, God always gives us good news? I mean, he always counteracts it, doesn't he? I mean, here's, here's some bad news. Our heart is deceitful. I mean, if, if that was the rest of the story, I mean, we'd be depressed. But that's not the end of the story. Yes, our heart is deceitful above all things. But the good news is that God's wisdom is ours for the asking. We can have God's perspective on all things. We don't have to be deceived by our own heart. We can, we can look to God and we can gain his perspective on all things. Look what James 1.5 says. But if any of you lacks wisdom. Now, let me ask you a question. Do we lack wisdom? 
Right. We all lack wisdom. So this verse applies to all of us. If any of you lacks wisdom, what's the Bible say? Let him ask of God who gives to all generously and without approach, and it will be given to him. So yes, our heart is deceitful. But we can gain a heart of wisdom. We can, we can have the wisdom of God. We can look at things from God's perspective. The Bible says very clearly, if we'll ask God for wisdom, if we'll ask God for his perspective on, on the matters of life, he will give it to us. And then in Proverbs 8, we discover that wisdom calls out loud to us. All we have to do is turn our ear toward wisdom to hear it. Beginning in verse 1, it says, does wisdom call, does, does, wis, does not wisdom call and understanding lift up her voice? On top of the heights beside the way where the paths meet, she takes her stand. Beside the gates at the opening to the city, at the entrance of the door, she cries out. To you, O men, I call. And my voice is to the sons of men. O naive ones, understand prudence. And O fools, understand wisdom. And so these verses tell us that we never need to go a day without wisdom. Because God will give it to us. The wisdom of God will illuminate our hearts. It will give us heaven's perspective on all things, including the matter of time, if we'll just ask. So Moses' request to God is, was that he would, that, that God would teach, us, teach him to number our days. I don't know if you've begun a prayer list yet for 2019. But if you haven't, and even if you have, can I just encourage you to add this to your prayer list? Would you just make it a matter of prayer every single day to say to God, God, teach me to number my days. Teach me to number my days that I may gain, that I may present to you a heart of wisdom. You will not go wrong when you make that a request. God will give you wisdom. He will help you to see the value of one day. The second thing I want us to notice from this verse is the reality. We've seen the request. The request is teach us to number our days. Here's the reality. Moses says to God, teach us to number our days. Some of you have a translation that says, teach us to number our days aright. Anybody have a, a translation that says that? Teach us to, to number our days aright. In other words, teach us to number our days correctly. <laughs> why? I don't know. <laughs> you don't know why you have that verse, that translation? <laughs> Well, it's a good one. It's a good one, all right? So teach us to number our days aright. Teach us to number our days correctly. Why? That we may gain a heart of wisdom. See, the reality is that when we begin to count our days on this earth correctly, as heaven counts them, it causes us to live more carefully. You see, it causes us to not live as unwise, but as, as wise people. When we begin to count our days correctly, we gain a heart of wisdom. First of all, that teaches us that time on this earth is short. When we begin to count our days correctly, one of the things that we begin to understand is that time on this earth is short. James chapter 4 Beginning of verse 13 says, Come now, you who say today or tomorrow we will go to such and such a city, spend a year there, engage in business, make a profit. Yet you do not know what your life will be like tomorrow. You are just a vapor that appears for a little while and then vanishes away. Now, please understand that the Bible is not discouraging us Making plans. I mean, some of, some of us, I mean, we like to sit down and do that, right? I mean, we like to sit down and we like to have this goal, like, here's where, what I'd like to do in 2019. Nothing, the Bible's not saying that we shouldn't make plans. The Bible is telling us that we should not be presumptuous. We can make plans. 
And I believe the Bible teaches us that we should make plans. But we should not live in such a way whereas we don't seek the face of God as it relates to our plans. We should never live in such a way whereas we, we live as though we can do whatever we want to do because, because we know tomorrow's going to come because we don't know that tomorrow's going to come for us. If there's something that we need to do and we know we need to do it, you know the time to do it is when? <coughs> Today. But so often we're presumptuous. We're, we're like, I know I need to do this. I, I know God is showing me that I need to do this, but I, I can do it tomorrow. Or I can do it next week. Have you ever missed an opportunity thinking that you could do it tomorrow and you were never afforded that opportunity again? See, God doesn't want us to live our lives in such a way whereas we are presumptuous. I, 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 you know, one of the things, and I'm not as good as I need to do, I need to be at it, but oftentimes I'll say this. I'll see you tomorrow. I'll call you tomorrow. If the Lord wills. I don't know that I'm going to be here tomorrow. Now, I want to be here tomorrow. Can I just be honest? I, I just want to be honest with you. I, I mean, I, I want to go to heaven. I'm going to go to heaven. But I want to spend as many days as possible on this earth. I want to see my kids grow up. I want to, I want to walk my, my daughters down the, the aisle. I, I want to make sure that my boys grow up to be men of God. Listen, I want to do that. But do I know for a fact that I'm going to get to do that? No. I pray that it's the Lord's will. But it may not be the Lord's will. My life may end before that ever happens. James compares our life on this earth to a vapor. Some translations say a fog, a mist. We're, we're here for a short time and then we're gone. We're out of sight. We're no more. You know, so often we act as though our time on this earth is endless. Wisdom teaches us to not do that. Wisdom teaches us to not presume on tomorrow or the number of days that we will have to do this or that. Listen, if you've been planning on being a better husband, do it today. If you've been planning on being a better wife or a better father or a better mother, listen, do it today. If there's somebody that you've been planning on telling about Jesus, do it today. Because we don't know what tomorrow is going to bring. We're here for a short time. And then we're gone. Listen to what Psalm 39 verse 4 says. This is David. David says, Lord, make me to know my end. What is the extent of my days? Let me know how transient I am. That word transient is interesting, isn't it? To be transient, a transient is a, is a person who's, who's staying or working in a place for a short time. That's us. I'm here on this earth. You are here on this earth for just a short time to do the work of God. And that is why we have to understand the value of one day. That is why we have to maximize each day because we're only here for such a short time. We are transient. David says, let me know how transient I am. Behold, you have made my days a hand, as hand breaths. And my lifetime is nothing in your sight. Surely every man at, at his best is a mere breath. David had the wisdom to understand that a man's life on this earth is but a breath before an eternal God. So when we begin to count our days correctly, the first thing that happens is we begin to understand that time on this earth is short. Some of you have lived longer on this earth than I have. But if I was to sit down with you and ask you, has it gone by pretty fast? I believe overwhelmingly most of, most of you would say, Pastor, it's gone by way too fast. And you know they tell us that, right? I mean, we're young. And so let me just carry on the tradition, young people. <laughs> it's going to go by fast.
you're going to wake up and you're going to look back and you're going to be like, I can't believe it's been that long ago. I can't believe that I'm nearly this age. Make the most of it. Because it goes by way too fast. But David understood the value of a day. Time on this earth is short. When we begin to count our days correctly, second, it teaches us to make the most of the opportunities that God gives us today. 1975. Does that seem like a long time ago, 1975? That's the year I was born. 1975. <laughs> Bill, Bill Gaither Bill, Bill Gaither wrote a song called We Have This Moment. Anybody familiar with that song, We Have This Moment? Well, we're going we're gonna to listen to it, okay? I want you to hear the words of this song. So today has been a day full of music, and I've enjoyed, yeah. I've enjoyed all of it. Listen to this.
those words kind of resonate in the heart, I think. And I think the reason they do is because they reflect the heart of God. See, God's will for us is to make the moments, make the most of the moments that he's given us, to make the most of the opportunities that he gives us every single day. Yesterday's gone. It will never come our way again. Tomorrow may never come. But we have this moment today. Over and over, the Bible teaches us about the importance of today. If you read the Bible, it becomes so clear on the emphasis of today. Let me just share with you just a few verses. Exodus 32, 29 says, Then Moses said, Dedicate yourselves today in order that he may bestow a blessing upon you today. Joshua 24, 15, If it is disagreeable in your sight to serve the Lord, choose for yourselves today whom you will serve. Psalm 118, 24, This is the day which the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. Matthew 6, 11, Give us this day, give us today our daily bread. Luke 24, 43, And he said to him, Truly I say to you, today you will be with me in paradise. 2 Corinthians 6, 2, I tell you, now is the time of God's favor. Today, is the day of salvation. We have this moment today. And God wants us to make the most of it. God wants us to fully give ourselves to the opportunities of today. Ephesians chapter 5, verses 15 and 16 speaks of how we are to make the most of every opportunity, redeeming the time. That we're to live as, as wise people, not as, not as unwise people. Ecclesiastes 9.10 says, Whatever your hand finds to do, do it with all your might, for there is no activity or planning or knowledge or wisdom in shale where you are going. And then Colossians chapter 3, verse 23 says, Whatever you do, do your work heartily as for the Lord rather than man. Today is a gift from God. And the way that we show our appreciation to God for this gift is by making the most of it, by doing that which fulfills His purpose and furthers His glory on this earth. Someone once captured the importance of a day in the words of this poem. They said, this is the beginning of a new day. God has given me this day to use as I will. I can waste it or use it for good. What I do today is important because I'm exchanging a day of my life for it. When tomorrow comes, this day will be gone forever, leaving in its place something that I've traded for it. I want it to be gain, not loss, good, not evil, success, not failure, in order that I shall not regret the price I pay for it. Teach us to number our days that we may present to you a heart of wisdom. It is so important to understand that counting our days is not a matter of arithmetic, but a matter of stewardship. Today is God's gift to us, but, we, but when we live wisely, it becomes our gift to Him. Now I'm not going to take the time to, to read it, because I know the time is short. But some of you have heard the poem called The Dash. That's where our legacy is. That's where our legacy is built. One day at a time. During that period of time that we're on this earth. You know, we're born. And we die. But there's a period of time in between that called the dash. That's life. And life is made up of days. And what we do with each day that God gives us. That is going to determine what our legacy will be. Now after, and this may sound silly to you, and that's okay, but it works for me, okay? So just humor, humor me for just a few more moments, okay? 
after I read this book, and I began to, to you know, and again, it's not about a matter of arithmetic, but I think there is something about understanding how long you've been on this earth. <laughs> Because when you begin to see it from that perspective, okay, God, I've been here this number of days, and I know I'm not going to live forever. As of today, I've been on this earth 15,953 days. And some of you would say, I don't even do the math online. <laughs> Did you know as of 2017, the average life expectancy for a male in this country is 78.6 years? Now, we know some people live longer than that. We know that some people don't live that long. But on average, a male in this country will live 78.6 years. That is 28,470 days. I have been alive for 15,953, which means, according to the life expectancy, I have 12,517 days left. Now, do you think that reality causes me to want to live each day and make the most of it? Absolutely. I think we forget we get in the, the, the rat race of life and we forget just how quickly life goes by. I don't have much time left on this earth. I want to make the most of it. I want to be, again, I want to be the best husband, the best father, the best friend, follower of Jesus and pastor that I can. There's going to be days where I'm going, to, I'm going to forget the value of a day. And when that happens, I just pray that the next day that God gives me, Lord willing, that I, that I receive it, that I'll make the most of it. Look at your life today. I think, you know, the end of a year is a great time just to begin to reflect on your life, to, to reflect on the year that's past and the year that's coming. What kind of legacy would you leave behind today? If your life was to come to an end today, what kind of legacy would you leave behind? As we move into 2019, here's my, here's my encouragement to you. Make this a life verse. In 2013, Psalm chapter 90, verse 12 became a life verse for me. Teach me to number my days, that I may gain a heart of wisdom. Would you just make that your prayer as you move into 2019? Because today is God's gift to us. And the heart of this series is that we would count the days of our lives on this earth so that they would count for the kingdom of heaven. I want to ask that everybody bow their heads, everybody close their eyes, nobody look around. Earlier I referenced a verse, 2 Corinthians chapter 6, verse 2. Where Paul writes, I tell you, now is the time of God's favor, today is the day of salvation. Let me just ask you, Has there been a day of salvation for you? Has there been a day in your life when you have confessed that you have sinned against God and you fall short, but that Jesus Christ came to this earth, that He took your place, that he shed his blood for the forgiveness of your sins. And has there been a day in your life when you have placed your faith and trust in Jesus Christ and Jesus Christ alone for your salvation? If you're here today and you can't answer yes to that, 
May I just tell you, according to the Word of God, now is the time of God's favor. God is showing you favor today by allowing you to be in this place, to hear the gospel, to give you an opportunity to respond to it, to place your faith and trust in Jesus Christ. Today is the day of salvation. So if you've never trusted in Jesus Christ as your Savior, today is that day for you. God wants it to be your day of salvation. So if you're here and you would like to receive Jesus Christ as your Savior in heaven, Right where you're at. Would you, just, would you just pray this prayer? Jesus, I believe you came to this earth to be my Savior. Today I confess that you died on the cross in my place. And shed your blood so that I could be forgiven of my sin. Today I place my faith and trust in you alone for my salvation. And surrender to you as my Lord. I thank you as I enter into this new year. I have new life in you. Today is my day of salvation. I love you, Jesus. Every head bowed, every eye closed, nobody looking around. If you just prayed that prayer, I'm going to ask you to do something. Right where you're at, would you just, would you just slip up your hand so that I can see anybody here that would say, I just prayed that prayer, Pastor Travis. Today is my day of salvation. Anybody at home? As we enter into this time of invitation, may I just ask what God is saying to you? What does he want you to do? How does he want you to respond? What's the next step that he wants you to take? Would you take it? Maybe here today and you would like to become a part of this church family. You'd like to make this your church home. Would you come during this time of invitation? Whatever the Holy Spirit leads you to do, I invite you to do it. Father, bless now this time of invitation. Thank you for the value of the day. And I thank you for what can happen today in all of our lives if we'll just allow you to be Lord allow you to do the work that you desire. Help us to be responsive now as you lead in Jesus' name. Amen. As we stand to sing, would you come right now? Don't wait. You come. You come.